just finished talking about exponential functions. And with that, we've dealt with the whole thing of um, graphing exponential functions, transformations. We talked about um, uh, all the other things with compound interest and money and all that stuff. And we can talk about Linda so and her whole business scheme and everything. Now, at this point, we're going to move into the log section. The log section has a lot more into it, but we're going to deal with it piece by piece. So here, we're going to talk about first the definition of the log. Then we're going to go to the properties of logs and sorry, not that one. We're going to do the definition. Then we're going to go to change the exponential to log and log to exponential. And that should be very easy and very fun. And then we're going to go like to the properties of logs. We're going to evaluate logs in the calculator and figure out how to do that and without the calculator. And we're also going to graph logs. We're going to find domain of logs. And we're going to actually find the log in the calculator. And it's important to know that logs in the calculator aren't just you put numbers in there and you're done. And certainly you have to put it in. So we're going to talk about that this time. All right. So before we move into all the other deep stuff, let's talk about the definition of a log function first. So a log function is this right here. So it says for the log function, x is going to be greater than 0 and b is going to be greater than 0. Now, we say something is greater than 0, what does that really mean? Everybody's thinking, yeah. So hopefully everybody thought when something is greater than 0 or bigger than 0, that means it's a positive number. So when it comes to x and b here, these are always going to be positive numbers, always positive. If they're negative, you just stop right there and say that it cannot be done. So x cannot be negative and b cannot be negative. If it is, it cannot be done. And you stop right there. Right. And also, b cannot equal 1. b has to be some other number greater than 1. So it can't be a negative number for b, and it has to be greater than 1. All right. Now, the biggest part is have to figure out what does the log function look like. So I like to do this one. This is really nice and fun. So our log function looks like this. And when we say it, we're going to say, I'm going to write it up top here where the definition is. We're going to say y equals So y equals log x base b. So when we talk about this part here, we say that is y equals log x base b. I say that every, every, every single time. Log y equals log x base b. And when we start putting numbers and stuff into it, other than saying x and saying b or saying y, those could be numbers. So we could say 15 equals log 3 base 5. Something like that. We can do anything of that sort. So with that, it's important that you know that log base b is what we're talking about, log x base b. Now, going further into it, this is the next part that I like. I think it's really easy. What they're going to expect you to be able to do is change the log function into exponential and the exponential function into the log function. So you have to be able to go backwards and forwards. So, change the colors here. So, I like to change colors. There we go. So, you need to be able to change the log function to exponential. You also need to do, be able to do it backwards. So you need to go from here to back here. And for those that probably didn't pay attention to what I just said there, this is your log function. Function. I don't know where that came from. 
and this is our exponential function. Stay function. Stay function. Right. So, need you from log function exponential and exponential to log. And let's go ahead and. Oh, man. Let's try this one. Let's get rid of you. And then we're going to try to pull this down a little bit. Oh, no. Never mind. We're going to keep it like that. So, this is what's going to happen. Now, with this, we have a thing called a swoosh. I like to call it the swoosh. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of pull in SpongeBob in here for a few seconds. So I'm going to give you the video right underneath this video on our tech so you can actually see, kind of like, not necessarily see what's going on, but kind of remember back from SpongeBob. And then when we talk about it on the next, on example one, you'll kind of understand it a little bit better. All right. So I'll see you then.